Well, we're here at Cincy AI Week. Thank you so much for taking the time to meet with us. And I want to ask you, just tell us a little bit about who you are and what you do in the world of AI. Yeah, so I am a penetration tester by trade. So I'm an ethical hacker um, is what it boils down to. Now, there is a big overlap between offensive security and AI. Obviously, AI is coming into the world very rapidly, and as such, there are brand new vulnerabilities that are popping up everywhere. So it is my job to test those and to kind of pull those out, put them into the light, and then have people fix them. And it's really a passion of mine to make sure that companies are secure. One of my mottos is think evil, do good. And that's something that I really take to heart. And as a company, that is something that we do every day. Okay, and what got you started into hacking? So I think I got into it by accident, really. I came across the idea of ethical hacking one day. I was actually in middle school, I think, um, and it was by accident. I had a newsletter in my email inbox and it had something along the lines of, hey, we had a hack, and it was like, that's cool. <laughs> so I started along the journey and I got into CTFs, which are capture the flag. So they're hacking competitions that are Jeopardy style. So you'll choose what you want to hack and then you'll get points for it. So it's a competition. It's a really fun environment that you can learn how to hack in. Um, and after that, I started getting certifications. I worked my way into the defensive world, which has a lot more opportunities right now for employment. And from that, I was able to pivot into offensive. Okay, and so tell us about how AI is making an impact on that industry. It is making a huge impact. So as we see in a lot of different industries, um, there's a lot of automation and specifically augmentation that is happening. So augmentation is different than automation. By default, a lot of people think of AI as automation. You know, it's doing things for you. You don't have to think about it anymore. But in reality, there's still a human interacting with AI. So we're taking that principle and we're blowing that up. And what we've done is we've created a platform for penetration testers and security professionals to augment their job, to have them get back to what they do best, which is hacking. And our deliverable is a report, which is professionally written, extremely knowledgeable. So our platform that we have, Axe AI, we're able to take the information from an engagement, from, from a penetration test, any given environment, and we can pull that in and in this platform, it will do a lot of you know, background AI stuff and it'll make that report for you. It will help you along the way. It'll give you directions, you know, next steps if you need it. And that's something that we're doing specifically in our industry. Okay, and when people think of hacking, a lot of times the first thing is uh, not ethical hacking. It's the, the other side of that. So tell us uh, how AI is maybe creating more of a threat that you have to be on the lookout for. Absolutely. So, hmm. I would say a lot of companies are employing AI just because, you know, it's the new thing. It's something that everybody wants to do. Obviously, it's really cool and really helpful. But when you see it being deployed on the enterprise level, so for example, a certain Microsoft product, um, there's a lot of vulnerabilities that comes with that. So you will see these AI solutions being implemented across the board without any compartmentalization or containerization. So one employee has access to most of the information throughout the company. An attacker can leverage that if they're already inside that environment. And they can, you know, if they've compromised somebody in a help desk, they can now compromise HR simply by interacting with that AI agent. And that's something that was built to help people, but now it's been turned on them and that has increased the speed of attack that the attacker is able to go. And many people do have concerns about AI and, and the uses of it. Uh, what are some of the, the benefits that you're using AI to uh, fight against that? Fundamentally, AI is a wonderful tool. It is something that, as I said, will augment many processes throughout a lot of different industries. And that is a really beautiful thing. We're getting people back to what they do best. 
The only issue arises when AI is implemented insecurely in an environment where you're taking on third-party risk without realizing it. Um, you have to do your research, you have to make sure you're utilizing it well. You know, don't put personal or company secrets on a cloud provider, do that on a local AI. But as long as that is the case and that's happening, the risk is a lot lower and the benefit is way higher. Okay, and what are some areas that you feel like AI falls short of being able to, to do the things that only a human can do? Well, that's where the difference between automation and augmentation comes in. I think it's unrealistic to have a standard for AI to be able to automate everything. There are a lot of things that only a human can do. We have logic, we have reasoning, we can ask questions. That's one thing that, you know, how many times has ChatGPT asked you, hey, can you clarify on this? How does that work? Tell me more about this. That's something that a human does. We pull in more information that's not just from an algorithm. We're able to think about it. We're able to process things differently than a computer. And so we still need that. I don't think that AI is going to take over many jobs. It will definitely augment them. It will look different but you will be more effective at what you do best. So it's changing the workforce, not necessarily replacing it. What do you feel is the best way for that collaboration to come together of uh, the human input and the AI tools? I think it's really something that is intuitive to a lot of people. I mean, when you have LLMs, that you can directly interact with, like, you know, ChatGPT and different platforms where you have generative AI. That's something where people, I mean, my parents, my grandparents, they're using it very easily. It's something where if you're interacting and talking to AI, it becomes less scary in a way, <laughs> and you're able to interact with it more freely and more fluidly. So tapping into that, having companies you know, after deploying and implementing AI securely, having those generative AI capabilities and those chat capabilities, having that will help implement it in the environment more smoothly. Okay, and what are your predictions for the future? What do you see are the next steps in the world of AI? Personally, I see AI in almost every sector of business out there from healthcare to HR to really anything. I mean, if you think about even just taking notes, everybody at some point in their life will take notes on a meeting or a phone call. That's something that AI just is good at, you know? It's able to summarize information and put that down in an easy to read human format. And even just that is one small example of what we can see in all areas of business but there are different areas where in every job that you will find, there's something that AI would be good at, that humans find mundane, repetitive, take away from their real job and their real position. Anything that's busy work, that's something that AI can really help augment. Okay, what's Emma's superpower? What's the thing you do that AI will never be able to replicate? Well, I think taking an environment so a web application, a network, and being able to hack it, that's something that I don't think AI will ever get to the point of doing. That is creating something new out of context. So you're taking a tool that's, it has a legitimate use case, you're living off the land, and you're able to take that and exploit it for something it wasn't purposefully built for. AI can only take in what it knows at least right now. Now in the future, when we have true AI, where it can think for itself, that's not something that we really have right now. Um, that might be a different scenario, but still taking information and using that to create something completely new. That I don't see AI ever taking. Well, thank you so much for taking time out of Cincy AI Week to share with us. Thank you so much.